In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, today the Church is celebrating three Hour Days. One, of course, is the Holy Resurrection of the Lord, and the second one is the, the equal to the Apostle Saint, Great Prince Vladimir, and uh, it, also the third one is of the memory of the Holy Fathers of the Six Ecumenical Councils, which is uh, actually the holiday is for tomorrow, but today the Church is moving for the Sunday service. My beloved, of course you know and I know what how important is the resurrection of the Lord, because by resurrecting himself, he showed himself that he has a total power over life and death, and he went down into the Hades and with his own with his soul, he went down there to free all those prisoners that were sitting waiting from Adam on until the, the until his coming, including with John the Baptist when he was being that had to go and uh, of course they were all waiting for the Lord he conquered the hell he conquered the death and he had given us a new life he had brought us he reconciled us together with the Father because of our transgressions and he took up upon himself all our sins and he suffered for them he paid the punishment that we were supposed to be punished and he, pun he took the punishment on himself to free us from it and so, so reconcile with our Lord and the condition is that we would believe him that we would believe that he is the Savior that he is the, the Son of God the creator of all the universe and that he had showed us this great love that he was willing to do that to pay our penalty and, uh, to, to fulfill the justice of, of God my beloved he gave us the resurrection to none of us now when we die should be afraid of the death if we learn to love the Lord while we're here on earth and this is the most important thing it is to learn to love our Lord now, what am I saying to learn yes we have to put an effort into it we have to study the scripture we have to study all about it, as much as we can about what is written about our Lord so that we will be able to feel the love and so by seeing us trying to re to c get closer to knowledge of what we can find out about our Savior, and this is already an act of love. And a little uh, our our willingness to go after Him, and Lord, seeing that He will give us the grace and to be able to fulfill that love. But of course, the what He wants from us is He wants He says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So he wants us to fulfill his commandments and the commandment is one in two parts and this is the, to love our Lord with all mind and heart and soul and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves and to prove that we have the love for the Lord. He wants us absolutely to love his, our neighbor which is his creation for whom he had died as much as he died for me. He had died for my neighbors for all all the people and he wants us to really to love them and to do to become merciful to learn the spirit of mercy as the father himself has as he had told father in heaven is sending the son and the rain on the good and the bad people. He's taking care of everybody because he has the great love for them. He wants everybody to be saved. This is what the wish is of the, our God, the God of love. He wants everybody to be saved, but he will not force us into salvation. He is waiting for us to want that salvation ourselves, for us to cry out to him, to go out after him, to try to reach him, because he does I want to force the, the love upon our, our, ourselves, my beloved. 
You know that love has to be free, and he gave us the freedom. He gave us the freedom either to love him or to turn against him. Of course, if we do turn against him, the consequences are very bad, because then we will not be able to receive the eternal life. But if we learn to love him, and if we will love him with all our heart, then we would absolutely want to fulfill his commandments and do not want to transgress it, because we know. But by every sin that I have committed, or you have committed, that has caused our Lord tremendous amount of pain. The pain that he endured in his, from the time that he was born on this, on his, uh, on this earth. Uh, as, uh, the, he had endured the, the pain because he saw my sins ahead of time. He saw everybody's sin and he knew that if we don't repent that we are going to damn ourselves and we'll have the lot with the evil spirits. And this hurts him the most because he loves us, my beloved. But he will not go against the, the law that he made of freedom. He will not make robots out of us. He wants to make truly um, us out of us, the sons and daughters, mothers and sisters. That's what he wants to make out of us. This is the kind of love that we have from our Lord. And of course, in the second how it is, it seems that Vladimir equal to the apostles, the great prince. And prince uh, he has been a pagan, and he has been a very staunch uh, uh, living according to the pagan rules and, and uh, filled with angers and and uh, revenges and all kinds of things as it was customary in that time those who were pagans and then one day he had felt in his heart that he uh, uh, that the pagans are worshipping the, uh, the pagan gods and uh, the statues and whatever he, they, they, they were doing at that time that uh, something is not right and he remembered his grandmother the princess Olga as she had equal to the apostle blessed she has actually become an Orthodox Christian and, and so he has then called out to all the world to see the representatives of different religions to come over and to uh, preach to him and to show why she should be maybe taking their religion and they came from from all over the world, all kinds of uh, different people with different uh, religions, including uh, Christians at that time. Uh, from the Rome, they came, and uh, and uh, they they came in, uh, and non Christians and all kinds of. Uh, people and they were all were trying to say that there is the true and the only real religion and so on and then when there came a uh, missionary from uh, uh, from Greece and from uh, the uh, Saint Sophia, uh, and the, and the, he brought an icon of the Last Judgment, and he explained about the Last Judgment, about the life after death, and about how uh, some people will um, be able to rejoice forever with the Lord and be in the Kingdom of Heaven, and others who had turned against the Lord will and, uh, actually condemn themselves together with a lot of the evil spirits. And after listening to all of them, his hostile to go out for that, but he sent his best people that he trusted most. He said, "Go to the countries of where these people are saying that their religion is the right one, and see how they actually practice it, and see what they what they do in their country." And the people went to over the world to different uh, uh, places to see uh, the, the religion, their religion working in action. And when they came back, they gave a report to the great uh, uh, prince uh, they, they, told, they told him that whatever they were they, they, they didn't feel anything special but when they went to the Saint Sophia Cathedral in Constantinople then they after they entered into the church and they, they, there was this service and they saw you know, the beautiful frescoes and icons and they heard the singing and, and so on and they felt that they couldn't figure out were they in heaven or on earth they couldn't figure it out they, they 
without the grace of God. And uh, Saint Vladimir had accepted that, but being still a proud pagan, uh, he decided that he's not going to go and beg uh, for for them to bring him into the orthodoxy. He's going to uh, show them first the power, and he surrounded uh, Constantinople. He went over there with the fleets of, uh, of boats, and as if going on a war with them. And uh, then he offered uh, to the king to give his uh, uh, his daughter to uh, him to be marrying him. And of course, the king said, "Well, if she cannot marry a non-orthodox. He has to become orthodox." And uh, he agreed. And uh, I think either there for uh, his audacity, I think God had uh, punished him with being bl becoming blind. I'm not quite sure. But in the baptize, he was healed, just like uh, St. Paul was from his blindness. He was healed, and uh, he, he has gotten the princes, and, uh, and they, they were able to, he was baptized, and they were married, and then he started to go with a big war against all these idol wor worship, idol, idols, and destroyed them, and the big uh, Piron, it was a big, uh, very revered um, idol you know, of them. They, they, they dragged them down, and then uh, threw them into the the Dnieper River, uh, and uh, my beloved, then uh, literally it was hundreds and then thousands were baptized, and of course the uh, church uh, from Greece, had the Orthodox Church, had brought, uh, sent them the Metropolitans and the bishops, and the first Metropolitan was Saint Michael, uh, Michael, he's, he's become a saint, he was the first Metropolitan of Kiev, and uh, my beloved, uh, Saint Vladimir has changed so much after baptism that all his roughness, all his gruffness, and all his um, uh, willing to uh, um, punish people and, and be uh, uh, literally being quite uh, unmerciful changed totally and he's become quite merciful in such a way that he wanted to release everybody that was in jail, that was uh, put in dungeons for whatever crimes they have done. And there even the Metropolitan, the Saint um, Michael, he, he had had to stop them, uh, had to stop them and tell them that no, you are a prince and you are supposed to rule the people and you should have a sword in your hand and that you should have the mercy and, and to be able to reward those who do good and uh, to those who, who do bad, you have to uh, be willing to punish them so that the other ones will not follow their example. My, my beloved, he has become meek and humble just as the Lord has wanted us to become and he started to worry about the main thing was about the kingdom of heaven how to bring his people to the kingdom of heaven and he had my beloved had showed so much love to the people that the people nicknamed him and said to him he is a prince Vladimir our our uh, uh, our sunshine or our sun and uh, then uh, from from the sun shining because he warmed them up so much with his love that he had my beloved he become a true orthodox Christian and so his people and so finally after him then of course he had two sons that become saints and then after that the whole people started to cling to the teachings of the gospel and their favorite readings was the gospel the, the scripture and the psalter and they were singing the psalter and reading the lives of saints this was their favorite reading and they truly the Russian land has become truly at that time, oh holy Russia, holy uh, Svetaya Rus, it's holy, holy Russia. And we, um, but, uh, but as the time went on, and uh, we started to look at the so-called the. Uh, Advances of the of the scientists and, and of all the things in the world, and started to look instead of looking for the kingdom of heaven, started to look for the things of the earth, of the temporary nature. How to improve? How to make things easier for us to live in this world? And uh, after ten technology, and after all the things that the West uh, started to uh, bring in or, or or had advanced into, and when the intelligence 
against and then the people started to pick it up and they have started to forsake more and more the gospel the soul the reading and, and, and the singing in the psalms and, and the church and they started and finally the uh, saints that we still had including one of them was uh, one of the last ones Saint John of Cross that he was warning the people and so the many elders to so come back to God otherwise there will be terrible things going to happen to you and uh, the enemy will take over and of course they didn't listen and they didn't listen and you know what happened you know what happened after the 1917 how the, the, the communists the atheists had taken over the country and how they have tried to wipe off the earth uh, the, of the, the, out of the all the, the clergy the thousands of people of clergy of actually the priests were uh, killed and martyred and, and, and the hundreds of bishops were martyred my, my beloved and the churches were defiled and they were, the relics were taken out and there was the icons were ripped and then torn out and burned and all kinds of things and the churches themselves the building were turned into all kinds of things clubs and you name it all kinds of terrible things that were done with the churches and many of them are still you can see throughout the whole rush you can still see many of them that uh, are are in, in, in top of totally devastation and no roofs and then the trees growing on top of the and of, of, of the buildings and so on and and they, they, because the government uh, that took over after they killed the and the Tsar and Nicholas and they made the martyrs out of out of the whole family, they have uh, they have also changed the whole structure and uh, and, and went into this uh, social uh, communism situation and they did all kinds of terrible things and millions of people had actually suffered and uh, because they, they would not give up Christ because they would not give up their faith and then after all the tragedy that happened the people started to come back to to the Lord and they have given their lives for the Lord and on the lives of the, in the blood that was shed by the martyrs of new Russian martyrs which probably in in actual counting them there were more in that 70 years of communist reign there was more martyrs and then the whole time of the Christianity, close to 2,000 years, my beloved. Now the, we we'll continue to pray that the Lord will hear the, the prayer and give the true faith back to the Russian people. It's still in a very difficult situation because people are getting involved in in all kinds of things. This is where we go into the aspect of remembering the Holy Fathers of the Six Ecumenical Councils. They have to protect the Church to make sure that it has a pure teaching that they will not deviate from the teachings of the Lord himself, the apostles, and they, they have then established, called the councils, and in those councils they have then uh, through the prayer and fasting and the grace of God, they were able to condemn heresies that started to spring up. And now the terrible thing happened. Now there is an organization called the World Council of Churches, which has actually took in into its organization every group, every heresy that there was con there was condemned condemned by the six ecumenical council they're all in there they're all united now into one organization into our greatest re re regret many orthodox um, local uh, churches have entered or joined that organization my beloved but there's some that are starting to wake up started to see that it is an evil that 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 unification of all churches nothing but the preparation for the Antichrist and some of them starting to become lady and starting to move out and, and get out uh, of that. So, but we have to pray, we have to pray hard that everybody will get out of that organization who consider themselves being orthodox and who believe in the creed and as it was uh, taught to us by the first and the second ecumenical council. My beloved 
prayer is needed, but prayer needed not lip service, but prayer from the heart. This is what needed the most, because my my beloved, without the real prayer, lip service is not enough. Lip service is it's even offensive to the Lord when we don't put a heart into it. When our lips, our tongue says one thing, our mind thinks of something else, and heart doesn't react at all to it. We have to get our heart involved in the prayer. And when our heart is involved in, in the prayer, then as some of the Holy Father says, it's like heart to heart. A heart, our heart unites with the Theotokos, Mother of God, and of course the Lord and, and all the saints. And it's so wonderful to really to be able to feel the prayer in the heart. And then without any effort, without you, know, you noticing all of a sudden, when the heart kicks in into the prayer, then tears will start to come through your heart because you know, you recognize how you have heard the Lord and how he struggled for you how he had died for you and how much he, it hurts him that every sin that we commit and then we start working on ourselves to clean up our act to make sure that we try to purify our heart to make the temple out of our heart for the Lord so that the Lord can come there as what he wants he doesn't really want to be in the stone buildings and so on he mainly is looking for for our hearts to be coming in and to making his abode with his Father and his Holy Spirit in our heart. Try, let's try, my beloved, to put more effort behind our praise and that so that we can reach the Lord from heart to heart and so that He will feel that no matter how rotten we are or so on, but we're cleaning up our act and He's going to come and make us a boat in our heart. Amen.